Good day, everyone. How are we all? Well, not too bad, thanks for asking. But uh, anyway, let's get to it, eh? Today we're going to be painting this fella. He's a big flabby orc boss with a big snippy claw. And he's riding a bike. Well, I could go a little bit deeper there and say that he's riding a big scrap bike with some massive guns on the end of it. So here's all the parts you get in the kit. Now, if you want to buy it, you can get it from mezgeik.com. Otherwise, just sit back and enjoy the video. Now, the quality of this print is spectacular. But no matter how good the print is, we're always going to have these little bumps on the bottom of each part. We're always going to have to do a little bit of cleanup. This is the equivalent of cleaning mold lines. Now, these wheels have drainage holes in them, and we're just going to make sure that they face down towards the ground like that. So to clean them up, all we do is just get a bit of a scalpel, a bit of sandpaper, a bit of a file. You could even go and pinch your wife's nail files. Whatever you've got to do just to clean it up and smooth out these little bumps and the supports. Any imperfections um, that went on during the print. Make sure all the parts are going to fit nice and perfectly. Just dry fitting this head to make sure it's going to fit. And the kit comes with this little metallic mohawk that I designed here to fit perfectly onto the heads without helmets. Options, eh? Well, we've actually got six head options to choose from, and even more if you choose to put the mohawk on or leave it off. Having a hard time trying to decide which head I want to use for this video, these are both my favourites. These are two optional plates that you can stick on the back of the boss. One plate is bare, so you can put your own symbol on it. This one here. And this one has the glyph of the Reapers. And the Reapers is my own clan that I've come up with. And the plate just fits snugly into his back. Now we've got the two chassis halves. And we just need to lightly sand the inside of each half so that they fit snugly together. And I designed each half so that you can just lay a bit of sandpaper on the desk like this. And just like get into it. You don't need to worry about anything overhanging. Now we've got a problem here. I got a bit of a misprint and I didn't realize until I was halfway through and I just bloody couldn't be bothered to print this again. See that bit there? That's missing. This little T-piece plug to make sure that the forks attach perfectly into the chassis like so but we're just gonna fix that up a bit later. We also got a little bit of a whoopsie daisies here with this hydraulic but we're just gonna fix it up with a little bit of milli putt. You know, we can continue having a really happy day. Sometimes you can just fix parts. You don't have to reprint everything all the bloody time. You know, like, if I'm going to reprint this, it's going to take, you know, it's going to take me hours, but it's going to take me 10 minutes. 10 minutes tops just to fix up this little, this little, this little, whatever, this little thing, this little rod that's gone a bit flat. So just grab your scalpel or a sculpting tool, get a little bit of milli putt, a little bit of water. Water is the magic ingredient for when you're using Milliput. And if you don't use water, it just goes all dry and crumbly, and that's not going to make anyone happy. Now, once we've got that roughly sorted out, we're just going to grab our claw and push it in place. Squeeze that Milliput into position. Now, this stuff, Gorilla Super Glue. Oh, I sleep with this under my pillow. This is really good. It's like jelly. So unlike other super glue that just, like, runs everywhere, this just stuff, it just doesn't. You just put a few blobs on and you can be you can be relaxed. You can just be calm, you know. I actually feel relaxed when I crack the lid of this Gorilla Super Glue. You just put your blobs and you don't have to worry about it pissing everywhere and acting like a wash and filling up all the detail. Good stuff. Now see how we're using a brush here. This is what we do to polish our Milliput. With a bit of water, get a little bit of water on that brush and just polish it. Yeah, so always remember when you're using Milliput, water is the magic potion. Now we're going to glue the two claws to his big snipper. Look at that jelly. That's not running anywhere, is it? You know how many parts I've ruined because super glue just drips all over it? Right, we've got some holes in his body because his body's hollow. If you don't know much about 3D printed miniatures, a big, a big slab of, you know, like this, it's going to take ages to print, won't print as well, so you can... You hollow it out generally, and uh, that means you need to put you need you need to put drain holes in it so the uncured resin can drip out. 
and I've done that in these parts and we just have to fill the holes just a bit of milli putt but you know it's not hard now one tip is this always leave one of these drain holes open just place it like facing down towards the base or somewhere where you're not going to see it because a good friend of mine Dark Gods 3D he's a bloody legend he's seen parts explode because of the, I guess the pressure build up of you know closed up drain holes anyway now we're super gluing the main body subsection to a couple of bits of wire popping out of a block of wood we just used a hole in his bum and his foot but for other parts like his head we're going to have to use a little drill to just drill a little hole so we can glue and insert that wire into the part sensational right we got little pins here these little pins they go into the holes in the chassis the little pins go in the little holes this big tunnel pin goes in the big hole oh yeah right now we've got to fix up this little t-piece now you won't need to do this because your part's going to print perfect but i thought i'd show you how i fixed it anyway because as we hobby we run into problems and problems require solutions let's figure out how we're going to fix this just adding a little bit of super glue to one side of the chassis where the fork is going to attach we only want this to glue to one side of the chassis at the moment and the other side of the chassis is just dry fit in place so we can make sure it lines up we pop that other side of the chassis off now have a go at this we've got the forks glued to the right side of the chassis only and then we've got that hole that we drilled a little bit earlier we can make this little bit of a wire t-piece and it's just going to slot in there perfectly let's pack it with some glue get some glue on the tip of that wire feed it in there nicely it's going to fit snugly smooth it down press it down with a bit of tweezers so that's solid this is the third size of pin the medium pin let's call it the medium pin that goes up in the in this cylinder that the front wheel is going to fit on just dab away any glue that squeezes out so that we're going to get snug fits what have we got here a bit of bent wire so it's going to stick in there i guess and then we've got a couple more little pins that we're going to glue into this front fork section and then we're going to dry fit this other half of the front uh, fork section we're going to bear with me right we're going to put some glue on this bit here and we're going to make sure that the gun fits perfectly this hole goes on up here where the handlebars would be and there's a hole down the bottom here but we're going to glue and now we know that the gun is in the right position it's going to fit perfectly let's glue the other gun this time we're going to use two bits of glue all right away we go we've got a few subsections coming along now let's just pop one more bit of wire into that hole there this is the big 19 mil oval base that i've cured with the supports on because i find that it helps prevent any warping just get stuck into it and bloody rip the supports off with your bare hands hit it with some sandpaper so that the bottom is nice and smooth now we've got a bit of a negative situation happening here have a go at this banana this can sometimes happen when you cure parts after they've been removed from the supports and they've just been hanging out for a couple of days let's fix it go get your wife's hair dryer and turn up the heat by uh, heating up the resin we can help the part return to its original shape now my wife really doesn't like me doing this she, this is an expensive hairdryer she doesn't like me using this to you know cook my toys but she's not here today so as long as we put it back before she comes home she'll never know nah. now once we've heated it up it's going to be nice and flexible it's going to be nice and soft so what we want to do is quickly whack some of super glue all over it get this base detail on the base and you know press it hold him don't let him go anywhere now we're going to glue his back plate on and for this video we're going to use the one with the reaper's glyph just got to whack a little bit of glue on and it's going to slot nicely in between his mechanical vertebrae now here are all the subsections ready to prime and they're all on blocks of wood you just can't go past a block of wood look seriously like if you're walking around and you see a block of wood stop and pick it up you can't go past that chaos black spray and a mask that's what we need to prime and see how we're going to prime it we're going to 80 percent prime it we don't want to overdo it we don't want to underdo it 
These days I only use the wet palette by Red Grass Games. I didn't even clean this last time, but look how much I care. I just don't. Just take it out, run it under the tap, and have another go. Now I use their stuff because I like it. They're not sponsoring this video or anything. As I said before, we only 80 to 90% prior our model, so that means we've got to fix it up with a bit of Abaddon Black and a big fat base brush. Let's just get it on quick, fill up all those gaps. So when we prime, we're only 80% priming because we want a light speckle effect. Have a go at this helmet here. You can basically see through it. That's what we want because that creates something for this paint to stick to. It creates a slight, a very slight abrasive surface. Let's talk color theory. Well, I call it the, the caveman color theory because it's so bloody basic what I do here. We're going to start off picking some metallics and I, want, I always like to go a family of metallics. And this time we've got lead belcher, copper, blighted gold and aluminium. Now for the skin, we're going to start off with some wire flesh. We're going to highlight with Zandri dust. We're going to mix that in with our wire flesh. And then finally, we're going to highlight with Kislev flesh. Now check it out. This is genius. We've got a bit of a family tree. So this is the skin line and this is the brown stuff line. So we're going to base coat the brown stuff using Steel Legion Drab. And we're going to highlight it using the same colors that we did to highlight the skin. We're going to do the same thing on the red. We're going to start with Mephiston Red and maybe a bit of Fire Dragon Bright, maybe a bit of Evil Suns, not sure at this point. And we're going to use Kislev Flesh to highlight it. We're going to share the load. Abaddon Black, Dark Reaper, Fenrisian Grey. You know, we could even use Kislev Flesh to highlight this black. But, you know, like that. But we're going to, we're going to just make, we, we want to differentiate the black a little bit this time you get the point you can share highlight colors across the different elements washes we've got agrax null oil druchy violet here we don't end up using that but at this point we're sort of trying to just plan what we what are we going to do with all this sort of you know like this broken skin around his body like around here maybe there's going to be a bit of bruising now for effects we want typhus corrosion for sure we're going to get some road lines on the base using avalanche sunset going to get some rust and we might even use a bit of this dry pigment for some dust. Now the last thing I do every time is I just gather them all up like this and just see how they're mixing together. Make sure there's nothing that's popping out going bleh. Let's start blocking in the elements and we're going to start with a mighty lead belcher. Mix some water into it on the wet palette. And this we've just got to smash this all over the model basically. Obviously we're not going to get it on anything that we know is not metallic. But everything else just slap it on you do not need to be neat at all with this the aim of this game is to get it done quick so we can move on to things that make us happy you can see we're not even too worried about our technique here we're dry brushing now all of a sudden we're dry brushing and then we're just like painting it up then we're slapping it on then we've got paint that's a little bit too runny a little bit too dry not worried what we want is texture, we want character in all of this metal. There's a lot of metal on this model. And what we're gonna to have to do is break up the little arguments that are gonna pop up from you know this metal copying that metal. Vallejo metal color copper. This is one of the metals that's gonna you know help break up those arguments. It's like my kids, it's like Daddy, Huey's copying me. You know, so that's an argument, and what we're gonna do is break up those little arguments, break up the areas, break up that lead belcher with a little bit of copper so we're gonna have a happy family of metallics not an arguing family of metallics we're just kind of picking random bits and pieces of the metal and being like yeah you you're gonna be copper now you you can stay lead belcher you like you know these these cogs here we're gonna make them copper the bullet tips they're gonna be copper but the bullet cases they're going to be gold. See, you can see it's already breaking it up a little bit. Let's do some skin. Wow, flesh. What a color. This is a good color for basing orc skin. Just thin it down. And start base coating all of the orc skin. No point flooding it all over the eyes, though. It just makes the eyes harder to paint because it just fills the detail. Whenever you're basing any kind of skin, just don't go all over the eyes. What's the point? Now look how thin I've got this wire flesh. Some might say I've got it too thin, but I don't really care. 
I'd rather have it too thin than too thick and we'll just go over it again if we need to which we will but I also like to have a little bit of translucency in my skin when, you, when you're doing a bit of um, green over black you get a little bit of interesting modeled texture coming through here and there it doesn't have to be all one solid perfect color that's, that's a waste of time in my opinion doing seven coats of the same color just to make a solid co no don't do that get a bit of character in there let some of the undercoats the under undercolors shine through when you're doing an oil painting you want some of those underlayers to shine through because it makes the it makes the artwork more interesting that's some artistic science it's base coat all the brown stuff using still and drab this is generally how I paint my miniatures. I will base coat all of the different elements. I won't even touch any washes or any highlighting until everything is base coated. Because then you can see a rough idea of how the model is going to pull together. You can see if anything's really standing out, if anything's missing. Like if we just gone and highlighted all of that silver, well, what a waste of time, mate. Because, you know, you'd spend all this time highlighting and working on this this lead belcher and getting it perfect without having any concept of what else is going on around you because then that voice is just going to pop up and go yeah nah mate that lead belcher looks pretty good eh like the way you've done all that highlighting and the shading and all that eh it looks heaps good man but if I'm going to be totally honest with you I'm going to I reckon there's a little bit too much of that lead belcher eh like if it was me personally I probably would have gone a bit of copper just to break it all up Maybe next time just base coat all the colors, A eh, before you go and start doing washes on that. So yeah, anyway, just yeah, take a bit of wisdom from that voice inside your head. Have a rough idea about how things are going to look before we take it to the final stage. Now that that first coat of wire flesh is dry, we're just going to go back and hit it with a second coat. Blighted gold. Now people ask me all the time, hey Mez, what's a good substitute for blighted gold? Well, there is no substitute for blighted gold. It's freaking amazing. Just go and get it. It's hard to find depending on where you are, but it's worth it. If there's like a journey worth going and throwing a ring in the fire and all that, well, there's a journey worth doing if you're going to get some blighted gold. And this is what I'm talking about, about breaking up the metal. So I painted these cogs here in the right hand side boom gun. But I painted them all copper and it's, you know, there's some arguments breaking out. So let's just pick the middle one and make it gold. Switch to some Abdon black now. Thin it with a little bit of water. We're just cleaning up a bit of the pants. Just cleaning up a few of the elements, the pipes, all the black stuff. There are quite a few pipes sticking out of all of the bionics and in between all the different gears and struts and hydraulics and whatnot. I'm just going to paint them all black. Paint them how you want. Paint them multicolored if it makes you happy. But generally in the past, I've had more success just painting them. Just painting them neutral, not making them stand out too much. I love pipes, but I don't want them to be taking away all the focus. I'm going to paint these ammo casings here. Uh, well, sorry, the ammo belt of the ammo casings. Now we're going to pick out a few random parts of the bike um, and paint them black. Again, we're breaking up the metal. We don't want this to be like a big silver bike. We want to we want to break it up. There's, there's going to be too much if it's all metallic. So we're just finding some areas and making them black like this drum here, this, this ammo drum, um, the fuel tank here. The, you know black pipes going in between everything pick out a few little random panels and scrap now we're going to use Mephiston red to paint the claw now I really wanted this claw to be the only red thing on the miniature I wanted it to be like a big red crab claw kind of thing like you know like an old-school classic um, orc style claw even the blades and the teeth on the pincer we want to we want to make it look like you know like even the bolts like an orcs just got a big fat paintbrush dipped it in a red paint bucket and away you went breaking up just a couple like one or two of these cables with a bit of mephist and red just for interest sake and then we're going to leave it alone we're not going to do any more red than that abaddon black get it on your wet palette thin it right down so we're going to start 
painting some super thin lines because we're going to make some checks on this crab claw. Start with some vertical lines as thin as you can, as very delicately as you can, but also don't worry if it's not perfect. An orc's done this, remember? Once we've done the vertical lines, we go horizontally. We're losing a little bit of focus here, that's all right, don't worry about it. I'm not worried. Just trying to make each square roughly the same size. And once we're finished mapping out the squares, we just start coloring in, trying to stay inside the lines. It's not so hard. But one, one thing I will suggest is that you paint one square and then paint the diagonally square opposite. Don't just start painting some random square on the other side of the claw because you're going to paint the wrong one. Once we've done our first coat, we need to go over it again. Darken them up and make sure each square is nice and black. And we're going to make sure that we do this to both sides. Back to Mephisto and Red to clean up the red squares. We want each red square sharp. Like we want each corner of the red square. We don't want it like this all sloppy. We want each of the red squares to be sharp and meet the opposite red square with a point like this. So that's what we're doing here. Closing the gap between each red square. If each one of these squares was one of our kids, we're tucking our kids in. We're tucking them in nice and tight and always remember to tuck our kids in. And that means make sure our free hands or our highlighting or whatever, they're nice and sharp. See this panel that we left silver here? It's annoying me. Let's get rid of it, make it all red. Right, now we've got most of the elements base coated. Let's work on the skin a little bit. I'm gonna use a bit of Xandru dust and mix it in with some wild flesh. About 50-50 or so, whatever. Just so it looks sort of like this. And then we're going to start painting this onto the top sides of each muscle. You know, like just where we think the highest highlight is of the anatomy. There's nothing fancy here, like we're not going to be, we're not shading, we're not blending this, we're not glazing this, we're not doing anything kind of fancy, just blocking it on like a solid opaque color. Sort of sketching where we think the top highlights are. So we've got this little elbow part here, we're going to hit the top of that section, this little forearm muscle, hit the top of that, the top part of the pec, all, you know, like the top, all along the top of the muscles, top of the belly, anything that's like a prominent upper area of the anatomy. He's got this love handle here, there's a bit of flab hanging over. That's a prominent area, so we're going to paint all of the top of that and the other side as well. Paint along the top of this skin here that's broken where the bionics are popping out. And on this main subsection, the bike subsection where we've got the hand pulling the brakes here, highlight the top of that. And remember, we're, we're looking sort of like general to specific here, which means we're not looking at, oh, this knuckle needs to be highlighted and the bottom side of that knuckle needs to be darker. Not like that. Just like smash it all over the top of his hand. Smash it all over the top of his arm. And we're going to switch to a finer brush here just to clean it up a little bit. Clean up those um, highlighted areas and make them come to nice clean lines. Getting a little bit more specific until it looks kind of like this. So we've got only two colors on the skin right now. We've got the lighter color and the darker color. And what we're going to do now is blend the two together using a single mid-tone. So we're going to add a little bit more wah flesh just to that mix that we made before. So now you can see we've got three colors to choose from. We're going to use that mid-tone and simply paint over that line where the lighter green meets the darker green. And what have we got here? We've just got an instant shade. We've got an instant blend. It's not too um, fancy. It's quite rough. But this is a concept for creating blends. And it's very easy to do. Look how, look how much uh, finesse we're putting into it. We're not, we're not really doing anything. We're just painting over that line. And it just creates an interesting blend and you can take it as far as you want like you can you can then go and make a mid-tone between each of those 
midtones and blend that line and then blend the next line and so forth. We're only going to stick with just these three colors for now though, because we're going to be doing a big tattoo on his arm. And when we paint that black tattoo, we're going to need to repair around the tattoo. And so we're going to be selecting one of these three colors to repair the tattoo as we go, depending on where the tattoo is on the arm. So like if, if we make a mistake make doing the tattoo on one of the light parts of the skin, we're going to select that light part of the skin to repair that tattoo. Part four, we're going to design the tattoo. We're going to need snacks, a bit of paper and a pen. Just start sketching some, some designs. This is the Reaper logo here, or roughly. And I wanted to put a bit of like a tire pattern that looks kind of like, almost like a snake or a dragon snaking around his arm. But I want it to look like a tire. So I just did a few different scribbles. These aren't, you know, like masterpieces or anything. Just, just like little thumbnails, just to get the, the rough concept, rough, the rough idea try a few different types a few different things like this these little triangular shapes didn't really look like tire pattern um, but then I came up with this one and it looked a little bit more like a tire pattern but also had that kind of dragon feel so we're going to go with that so let's mix up a little bit of water into our Abaddon black and start by painting the Reaper logo on his shoulder you're going to make sure that the paint is very thin so that um, any mistakes that we make are easy to clean up. So as I was saying before, we're painting this in that solid green highlight color. So if we need to clean up and cut in, which we will, um, we will need to you know, sharpen up what we've done here by using green to come in and cut it in. And we know now exactly what green to use. We'll use that brightest green So we'll just paint a little bit of a bottom jaw now. And as you can see, it doesn't look amazing. It never does right at the start. And, and painting is like that. You know, it, it doesn't always look amazing the very first time you do it. You, you know, or as soon as you start doing it, you've got to keep working on it. You've got to push through this ugly stage, keep refining. Once we've painted the logo, we're going to paint an, a black band snaking around his arm. Just start with the outside lines first. So we can make sure that it's kind of even and you know, like one part of the band isn't really thick and the next part's really thin. So try and get it kind of roughly the same and then we just start painting and filling it in so that it's a big solid black line like so. And we go back to the logo and just keep refining it. Keep sharpening up the different parts of the design making each corner as sharp as we can, making the teeth sharp, making it nice and solid, a nice solid color. Like the scythe here, we want that to be nice and solid. And in a moment, we're gonna go and make it even better. We're gonna go back to our wet palette and select just the right green that we need to start cutting in this design and sharpening it up. Now I find with freehand that you always have to do this. You always have to just kind of roughly smash out the design in one color and then use the exterior colors to cut in and clean it up. And that's when the design really starts coming to life and, and looking its best. Which is why we don't really, really want to be doing any shading and highlighting and perfecting the skin before we do this because it's going to make it really hard to cut in the design, you know, like if this, if this, um, uh, what is it called, a deltoid, if, if this part of his shoulder here had all sorts of blends and things going on, the cutting in that we're doing right now would just look horrible because it's not going to follow the, the gradients and the blending. So we get, we get the solid colors on there first, we get the design on there next, and then we cut in and make the design really nice and sharp and then we can go and add shades and highlights and things around it later and it's going to be much easier so to do the tire pattern this is how we do it we've got our black band that's black 
Then we're going to select the right skin tone green that we need to paint these triangle lines that reach almost to the edge of the black black bands. And then we're going to do exactly the same thing on the other side so we get this opposite shape. Then we're going to paint green lines like this which reach to the edge of the band. That's it. That's what we do. Let's do it. Let's have a go. So we're going to pick the right green. We're picking about a, about a mid-tone green here. We're painting our triangle lines and they're not quite reaching the edge of the black band. Painting them as thinly as we can. But remember, it doesn't matter if they're not perfect. It's never going to be perfect the first time. We'll be using some black to cut in and sharpen it up a bit later. Triangles on the opposite side now. And this creates like a prominent zigzag shape snaking down the middle of the band. We've got to remember, try not to let each triangle reach the edge of the band. Not quite, almost, but not quite. Because once we've done our triangles, we're going to paint these thin little lines on each side of the band, and that's going to finish off our tire pattern. Now I know it looks hard, but we've just got to we've just got to do a few things. We've got to be nice and calm and relaxed. We've got to we got to you know believe in yourself, believe that you can do it. Um, hold your hands together. See how my fingers are resting on the other hand that's holding the miniature. So it's always, you know, everything's as one. You're not like hold, you're not holding the miniature with one hand all the way over there, and it's kind of shaking and flopping around. And you're trying to bring your right hand to the miniature and make it steady. That's not going to happen. We're going to use some Abaddon Black now to fix it up, sharpen it up. So yeah, I always say. You're not born with a steady hand. Like people, people always say to me, "Hey, dude, you've got such a steady hand." Um, but my response to that is always, oh, "I'm not born with a steady hand. You create a steady hand, and you do that by staying nice and calm and relaxed and chilled out. Just chill out, man. And you hold your hands together and create stability between you and the subject that you're painting." So if you feel like you you know you don't have a steady hand, bugger that. Just tell yourself you bloody you do, mate. You just do. Just give. Just do it for yourself. Now I notice these little scratches here. I think that's a bit of a, a misprint or something because that's not in the sculpt. I know because I did it, and I don't remember doing that. So I'm going to fill some of these little scratches here. Fix it up a little bit. We're going to use plastic putty. This is sort of like liquid green stuff. You could use that. Same kind of thing. Just get it on the brush, fill the holes, just like slap it on there. And what we're going to do next is, is just sort of massage it into the holes using a little bit of water on the brush, not too much water. Otherwise it just won't, won't do anything. You just, you kind of want solid plastic putty in the holes and you just use the water to feather it out around the outside. And once it's dry, just paint over it again with Mephiston red. Again, this is a bit of a misprint, so you probably won't even be needing to do this. And how good do we feel? We're, we're right, ready for the next stage. We're finished base coating everything, um, and we're happy with how everything's looking. We've done our tattoos, we've done our freehand checks. It's ready for the next stage, which is part five, wash and add tone. Now we're going to kick this off with the unstoppable Agrax Earthshade. How good is it? You just can't beat it. Get 13 or 14 blobs on your wet palette, but don't mix water with it. Agrax don't need water. It's ready to go straight out of the pot. There's nothing you could mix with this paint to make it any better, I reckon. Just slap it all over the model. You can be rough and nasty. Just get it all over the metal first, because we know we want we want a lot of it on the metal. Doesn't even have to be that clean. Doesn't matter if it pulls here and there, because remember we want that metal to have a lot of texture and a lot of character. So don't worry too much about it, getting too much of it all over the metal. Um, just just get it done as quick as you can, because it takes quite a while. There's a, there's a lot of metal here.
I just ran out on the uh, wet pallet there, so I just, I'm just going to straight out of the pot shamelessly. Now we're doing it on the claw. Actually, we're doing it all over the model. The only place we're not doing it just yet is the skin, because we just, we want to go heavy all over the model, except we don't want to go heavy on the skin. We're going to put a little bit of this on the skin, but only, only a little bit. So go heavy everywhere except for the skin, and no point doing it on the black pants. Now we're going to do it on the skin, and we're going to do it in a controlled way. See how we're just kind of painting one one muscle at a time, or one anatomical group at a time, not just slapping it everywhere. We don't want tied marks everywhere. We want to control this. So um, you know, like if you start painting a little bit here, and then just you don't finish this little love handle, and you just start painting his arm. It's going to dry and it's going to leave an ugly mark there. So we've got to try and control ourselves and control our Agrax Earth Shade right here and try and get a really even coat. So notice what we're doing. We're painting, we're painting this wash over every single part of the miniature, basically. This is this is. I don't always do this, but I often do this. I'll base coat all the elements and then choose a wash and get it all over the model, and that unifies all of the different elements puts them under the same flag, sets them in the same environment, and gives them something in common with each other. And you know, it just ties the model together. Now we can start the journey of highlighting all the different elements back up. So we've base coated them, we've washed them, and now we need to spruce them back up. We made them, make them brighter again, bring back the color. So we're using Mephiston Red right now, thinned down with water, sort of glazing it around the place. There's no science really here. We're just going to be like, yeah, we'll, we'll brighten this bit up here. We'll brighten that bit up. Um, you know, just just liven things up a bit. Switch to some Evil Sun Scarlet and get it even brighter still. Focusing more towards the edges here. And you could, you could be glazing this or you could just straight up edge highlight. You could do whatever you want just to, just to brighten it up. All we want to do is make this red pop a little bit more. Mephiston red by itself is is quite a dull red in um, in you know in a, you know of itself. But you know when you hit it with Agrax Earthshade, it goes even darker and duller still. So we need we really need to brighten it up. So if you go if you if you do a little bit too much, watch this. Just get your finger onto it. Just wipe it off. The finger is one of the best tools for painting. Um, see how we're just going to add some scratches and stuff here, just some random lines. Now we're starting to add texture to the red. We want to get like some scratches and scuffs and stuff. And we're starting that with a red here. Now, once we've done the red, the Evil Sun Scarlet, we're going to switch to Dark Reaper and just very quickly highlight the black checks in this section. There's a lot of black on this model, and we're not we're not worrying about that right now. Uh, we're just doing the little checks on the claw, just exactly the same sort of thing that we just did with the Evil Sun Scarlet, just sprucing up this black a little bit, focusing towards the edges, any rivets, any scratches, making them pop. And then let's hit up some Kislev flesh. This is going to really tie the claw together because look, we can just highlight this across the red and the black. We're sharing the load because this color works well over the black and the red. That's why we chose um, Kislev Flesh at the start because we knew that we could use this color to highlight the red, the skin, the black, the brown. And this is what I call harmony, I call, like harmonizing the colors. You know, then that just means using using the same sort of highlight colors across the different elements. That creates harmony. It helps create um, a bit of a mood and lets each of the different elements live in the same environment, reflecting the same kind of light. But you've got to choose your colors carefully. Like you you can't be using a, like a light blue color because that's not going to work very well over the red. It's going to look strange. And we're just edge highlighting with this Kislev Flesh. In a minute we're going to add a lot of battle damage and scratches and stuff. But 
we want to lay down a foundation. We want to highlight everything first. We're going to lose a lot of the highlights. We are, because we're going to add scratches over the top of it. But we're also going to keep a lot of the highlights. So it's important to do the highlights first. Because the, sh the claw existed before the scratches existed. It was a nice shiny claw and then it got scratched. So we're going to paint a nice shiny claw, then we're going to scratch it. We're going to use a bit of sponge and some typhus corrosion. We're just going to rip up a bit of sponge to make it look a little bit random and crazy. Use some tweezers to hang on to it, dip it in a typhus corrosion, dab most of it off. And look at this, away we go. Just start scratching, start swiping and poking and dabbing and just fiddling with it and creating a lot of this kind of brown scratched up rusty look and a sponge is amazing for this you can't paint this you can't paint in such a random way you need to actually make it random for it to read really well as random if you if you could get a bit of a swiping motion like this you get like this kind of really sharp edge scratch look and if you poke it, you get tiny little little pings of damage, little dents, little paint chips. We're doing look at this, we're doing it on the on the metal as well. We really we really want to create an interesting metal texture across the miniature and a varying metal texture. We don't just want one or two metals, we want a lot of metals. We're having a metallic family. We're doing it on the boots even, it just creates scratches. So sponges sponging damage is not just creating paint chips. You just you it just creates scratches and texture. I love it. I'll do it. I'll do it on anything. The only place we don't really want to do it on this miniature is the skin. I want to keep that skin kind of fresh. Moving to the uh, the bike chassis and the um, the bike uh, the different subsections of the bike and just griming it up, griming up all of the metal. We're making this bike look filthy. We can go heavier in some spots, like around the exhaust here. We darken that right up and just go nuts on it. Underneath the underneath the chassis, we want that to be really dirty. Around the gun tips, like this. And then everywhere else, you can just kind of make little scratches and little dents. We're going to switch to an old paintbrush and make it really heavy on the blade claws. We're going to do something a little bit different with this claw. We're going to make it look blunt and dull. Most of the time, we want things to look really sharp. Like if, if there's a sword or an axe or, a, or like a power claw or something, you want the blades to look really sharp. But how about this? Let's make them blunt. Let's make them like, you know, not sharp at all. Let's make them like a blunt instrument that just kind of squishes you rather than snips you in half. I think that's nasty as. I think that's more scary than a very sharp and clinical claw snipping you in half. I think I'd rather get snipped in half than squished in half. What do you reckon? One of my favorite movies as a kid was Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. And in that movie, the sheriff of Nottingham tells Robin Hood that he's going to cut his heart out with a spoon. And then later on, the sheriff and his cousin are just sort of hanging out, eating meat. When the sheriff's cousin asks him, why a spoon, cousin? Why not an axe? And then the sheriff goes, Because it's dull, you twit. It'll hurt more. And yeah, I learned that as a kid, and I think that philosophy has sort of stuck with me throughout my life. Let's do a little bit of work on the skin. We're going to use some Nuln oil and wipe most of it off on a tissue. And we're going to start enhancing the shadows on the anatomy. We'll start by just sort of gently putting some Nuln oil into the shadows of each anatomical element. So like before when we were putting the highlights on the anatomy, well, we're doing sort of the opposite now. We're you know, darkening the underside of the arm here, darkening the underside of the, the pecs and the, the belly and all that sort of thing. Um, and you know, as the paint starts to, to wear off on the brush, we sort of just, we just sort of keep going, don't we? We're not worried. We just keep going, sort of dry brushing it around the place, just darkening areas that we think need to be darkened. And while we've got it out, we're going to hit the leather. We're going to darken that leather as well. Like the leather, leather armband here is his boots. And we're also going to darken up his claw. We're just looking at the, the rider at the moment. 
and just kind of picking areas on the model and darkening it. So so no one oil can be used as a toner like this. We're just adding tone, adding darkness. And by adding darkness, we enhance the lightness. Back to the skin now and just sort of stippling it. So as the paint just wears off on the brush, you can just start stippling it like this and you get like a bit of a mottled texture, a bit of freckled texture on his body. And we can also start enhancing a bit of a blend. So before when we just added those three green colors, the highlight, the midtone, and the and the darker green, this is sort of masking over that and creating a little bit more of finesse, a little bit more of a blend. Darkening underneath the fingers here, underneath the hand. We're not really going to do any highlighting under there, but we want to darken it. Switch to a finer brush and start enhancing more of the freckles. Do too much, just dab it with your finger like that. Finger painting, aren't we? Picking some of these um, folds of flab and just just blending them a little bit with this known oil, just darkening the undersides of them, stippling it towards the towards the highlights. Get a little bit thinner as you get towards the the lighter sections, so that it creates that nice transition. And I kind of imagine this guy to just have freckles and and bumps and you know moles and stuff all over him. So he's not he's not beautiful. He's not going to win any um, beauty contests. He's been on his bike all day out in the sun riding. He's got melanoma for sure. Oh, well, I mean, look at him. His half his body's missing. We want to. We we just want to make him look rough. Where all the bionics are popping out, we're sort of darkening the skin around that section. So have a look. His skin's rough. It's got texture, but we're starting to see a little bit of transition between shadow and highlight. We're going to get some Abaddon black and thin it right down and glaze this around where the bionics sticking out. We want, this, well, we want this section here to come to a, a complete black. So the glaze is quite strong and we just sort of make sure that we push it towards where we want it to be the darkest, which is right where the bionics pop out. We want it to look kind of rotten almost, like maybe a little bit of, even a little bit of a frostbite look. And that's just gonna close off the gate of, you know, this is the skin this is where the skin ends and this is where the bionics begin creating like a black fence now we're going to go back to our range of greens on our wet palette we're going to select the right one that we want and start stippling the highlights we're going to enhance the highlights on this skin same thing as what we just did with the known oil except this time where we're focusing on the highlights rather than the shades so poking it around on the top of the flab the top of the muscles and his skin folds like any creases up here between his his arm and his um, pec his jugular highlighting the top of this elbow part here the top of this forearm muscle poke a few little dots on the forearm here not too much we just want to enhance it a little bit start doing a little bit of work on his hand we'll always start off with the hard sections like the knuckles and then kind of work your way out from there like the knuckles the bony areas of the anatomy are the landmarks you know they're always going to be sharp and they're always going to be highlighted so yeah we can always start with the knuckles and then just you know bridge the gaps like start doing between the fingers like this and highlighting around the nails the fingernails now we changed our mind about the head. We're gonna go with this head instead. Super glue is mohawk on, and while the glue's still wet, just cut away any bits of super glue that's seeped out. We don't want big blobs of gorilla super glue just drying all over the place. That'll look horrible. And it's easy to scrape it away while it's pretty wet. Go and prime it. And now we just need to, we're basically catching up here because halfway through this paint job, we decided we're gonna do his head again. So we don't need to show you the whole process 
but we're just gonna we're just gonna quickly smash through it. So we primed it, we fixed it up with some Abaddon Black. Now we're base coating the skin with wire flesh, base coating all of the metal with lead belcher, like his sunnies, his mohawk. Gonna use some blighted gold to paint his tooth. You know, like you could just paint this tooth color, but bugger it, I don't want to paint it tooth color, I just want to paint it gold. Start building up our three stages of highlight on the skin. Start with the lightest and go and find all of those, those, you know, strong highlighted areas. Top of his head, top of the ears, top of the cheekbones, the lips, the landmark areas. And then we switch to our mid-tone and just kind of blend them out a little bit. Find the line between the dark green and the light green. Just paint over it. It's so easy. You can paint anything like this. You can paint, you know, like skin, clothes, power armor, guns, swords, cats, dogs, horses, whatever you want. It's just so easy. It's like cheating. And like I said before, you can take it as far as you want. You can just keep adding more and more in between colors and just enhancing the transition as much as you want or as little as you want. Find your own balance between getting it done quick or making it look spectacular. This is the Molotov Liquid Chrome Pen. Bloody hell, this thing. This thing is good, but mine's a bit buggered. Mine's just leaking out everywhere. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let it just leak onto this base here and use it like a little palette, get out my brush and just start painting the chrome onto these lenses. And it's going to be a mirror finish. It's legit chrome, it's not silver, it's bloody. You can see the reflection of the paint brush as I paint it, it's good. It's really good stuff. Now a couple of things you gotta be careful of. It dries quite quickly, so you don't wanna fiddle with it. You wanna paint it on the surface as quickly as you can and move to the next surface. So we've done the front, now we're gonna do the sides. And you also wanna make sure that we hit the edges. Another thing is we don't wanna get any paint on this because it'll pretty much just wreck it. So that's why we painted everything else around it first. Mirror finish. Agrax Earthshade now, and we're going to very carefully paint this all over the face. Definitely don't want to get this on the chrome. One thing about this chrome, it's like a mirror, but if you put a wash over it, it basically just makes it look like silver with a wash. You'll lose the chrome finish. So once the chrome goes on, it never gets touched again. So be really careful when we're doing the Agrax Earthshade around the sunnies. Have a brush on standby in case you, you get someone there and you can quickly just dump this brush, pick up the other brush and wipe off the mistake. Let's work on the bike a little bit. We're going to use a dry brush and get some dark reaper. Dab most of it away on a tissue. And we're going to start dry brushing the wheels. I'm using the Opus dry brushes here. They're really good. You can do a lot with these. So we start delicately, just lightly finding the edges. So you can see I'm not going crazy with it. I'm just gently letting the brush locate the edges and kind of getting a feel for it before we start going off with it. So once we start getting a feel for it and we, and we start, uh, we can be confident that we've got the right amount of paint coming off, just start sending it. Start just nailing this, this tire. We don't want to be dry brushing over every single part of the surface on these tires. We want them to be black but we're just using the Dark Reaper to create a little bit of a shine. So as, as we start to build it up, you can see that we're creating a bit of a, like a, a crescent shape down here and a, another crescent shape up here on the top. 
and that's what we want to try and go for that's what we're going to try and enhance and you know you can just go crazy on the top of it so we're going to do the same thing on this tire here crescent shape up the top here and a crescent shape down the bottom there and see how we're trying to be directional with our brush rather than going like this and just get, catching all those bottom edges by just directing our brush downwards we're catching all of the upper edges now we're going to switch to some Fenrisian grey get rid of the dry brush don't need that right now we're going to start enhancing it and highlighting under all of these little scratches here I sculpted a lot of little scratches on the surfaces of the tire just makes it a little bit more interesting and gives a little bit more detail makes the tires look tired okay anyway we're doing a little bit of stippling as well enhancing the shines that we created earlier with our dry brushing with this tire let's get a little bit of glazing happening as well just put a little bit of water on the brush just a tiny bit and just sort of just create this little this little line here going around the, sort of like the circumference of the tire and once we've once we've created a little bit of a shine we can we can continue our stippling and just build up the highlight make it look shiny use this Fenrisian grey to continue the highlights onto the edges of all of the tread use the edge of the brush when we highlight the edge of a surface which makes, just makes it a lot easier look at that brush, that brush is nailed it's just not, not, it's not bothering me though is it let's just keep doing it sometimes when the brush gets a little bit messed up like this you can use it to your advantage when you're stippling it just creates a little bit more texture just pop him off the wires put him on a little bit of sponge so that it doesn't scratch the paint off if you just put it straight down on the desk the desk is pretty hard and it's definitely going to scratch or rub some of the highlights off we don't want that let's pop some of the wheels on and we're going to super glue all around the pins and this half of the chassis because we're going to condense some of our subsections and glue them together now now make sure you get some of that Gorilla Super Glue on the shopping list. Just just sneak it on there. What I do is I I put it right after M and M's. I'll I'll put M and M's on the shopping list, and then Gorilla Super Glue. So the wife's out shopping and she's going through the shopping list. She sees M and M's on there. She's like, oh, what a husband, what a great husband. Let me get some M and M's. Absolute champ. And then the very next thing is super glue oh he needs some super glue he's, he's, he's telling me to get myself some m ms of course i'm going to get him some bloody super glue no worries bit of fenrisian gray to touch up the tires and then we're done ready to move on let's get some white i'm using ceramite white get it on the wet palette get rid of the bottle don't need that thin it down with a little bit of water and twist the brush until it's a nice sharp point we're going to do a little bit of freehand here we're going to paint a bit of an old school retro 3D screen here. Start with a nice thin horizontal line and then right in the middle of it we're going to paint a vertical line. We're going to create a little bit of perspective by adding some diagonal lines to each side of that vertical line and with each new diagonal line that we add we're going to increase the angle or decrease the angle whatever the case may be and this is creating perspective a perspective grid and once we've done that we're going to create a little bit of a sun on the horizon or maybe a moon whatever you want once we've done a bit of a semicircle, we can fill it in, but we'll leave the bottom of it black to indicate a bit of a mountain range on the horizon. Now we're going to go completely out of focus here while we paint the, the rest of the mountain range, just a thin white line. 
indicating the tops of the mountains. Get to some Abaddon black and now we're going to cut in and just sharpen it up a bit. Just cleaning up that mountain range. Sharpening up the peaks of the mountains in front of the sun. Well, we've got that black out, we'll just clean up this gauge here. We're going to paint a digital fuel gauge. Back to some white, thinned down to create a little bit of haze behind the mountain range. A little bit of a gradient in the sky. Going from dark at the top to lighter towards the horizon. Again, we're out of focus, I'm sorry. But we're painting some horizontal lines in the grid. Having a little bit of trouble with the camera focusing on such a small area. And so when we painted this dial on the right here, it was all out of focus. So this is what we do. We paint a white arch, then a thin black line within the arch, then another black arch at the bottom, and then we just do a bunch of lines. Now we're going to glaze it with red. No, we're not. We're going to undo that. We're going to get back to our white and do it again. Why do something once when you can do it twice? Originally I wanted like a pink screen, but I realized straight away that that's not going to I'm not going to be happy with that. I'm not going to be pleased about that at all. So we're switching back to our white and painting over those crazy thin lines that we already did before. So we can have another crack at it and this time we're going to make the screen green. It was actually much easier to paint it the second time than it was the first time. There we go. Good enough. Bill tan green is what we're going to do this time. Glaze that straight over the surfaces of both of the screens. Yeah, I made a bit of a mistake glazing that red on the screens earlier, but I kept it in the video because, you know, we're all human. We all make mistakes. No one's perfect. I mean, we shouldn't hide our mistakes. We should be proud of our mistakes and we should show them off. At least show off what we did with the mistakes, what we learnt, or how we fixed them. Even though making mistakes makes you uncomfortable at the time, you need to make mistakes to evolve. We're going to use this fluorescent lime from Green Stuff World. Thin it down with a little bit of water. And we're going to glaze this over the white parts on the screen. This doesn't. This isn't precise. You don't need to worry about doing this too perfect. We're basically just glazing over and enhancing the color, enhancing the green, brightening it up. We're just going to glaze over it a few times and make it nice and bright and make it look like it's glowing. Just like a classic green sci-fi screen, like a radar or something. Let's do a bit more work on the body. I'm going to use some Dark Reaper and start mapping out where the highlights go on the pants and the black stuff. I'm not going to do anything too fancy on the pants this time just going to kind of do a classic edge highlight style. So just using Dark Reaper to kind of highlight around all of the rips and any major folds or prominent areas in the cloth. And this doesn't need to be too sharp and precise, too thin, because we're going to be using a lighter gray over the top of this a little bit later to enhance the highlight. For the pipes all we do is just paint a dark reaper bar along the pipe pipes are cylinders and the way a cylinder shines is just with a light bar going perpendicular to the shape of the pipe pretty easy but again we're not going to just we're not going to make this too perfect just sort of smashing a bit of dark reaper on there and then we refine it as we highlight later on. Lots of little black pipes, aren't there? For this plate on the back here, just going to stick to the outside, just edge highlighting it. But again, we're not like highlighting right on the edge. Add some fine little scratches here and there. And also going to glaze a little bit of this Dark Reaper over the tattoo just to create a little bit of 
depth in a tattoo and make it you know a little bit lighter on the top where everything else is light on the muscles and the anatomy around it just brings that tattoo to life a little bit you know it's it's got shape too it's not just a 2d object it's a 2d object that's wrapped around a 3d object so it's going to be reflecting light I'm going to highlight the edges here around his torn belly I kind of like the idea that this skin here is all rotted and feral but in painting it, uh, it, it it started to look like almost like he got blown up and burnt and his skin just melted and caught fire and it's all scalded so you know either of those pick one same thing with the mask here just finding the prominent areas prominent folds of cloth as well as the edges and we're just going to clean it up a little bit with some thin down Abaddon black so like this bit here it's a little bit clumpy it's a little bit too broad so we just close it up cut in with a bit of black we want to get some nice crisp highlights now remember when you're painting black you need more black on the surface than there is gray otherwise it's not going to look like black it's just going to look like dark gray so yeah black surfaces need small sharp highlights of gray just glazing a little bit here to darken down some of those scratches and making the pipes a little bit neater now we can use Fenrisian gray and now we're going to bring up the highlights painting within the area of the dark reaper that we added before inside that area just brightening it up make these pipes look a little bit shiny this isn't too hard you just need to try and make sure that you get a nice consistent highlight it's not too patchy if you know what I mean nice sharp thin bars of light going up the pipes I'm going to highlight the edges now with um, the edge of the brush edge of the part, edge of the brush yeah now this is Fenrisian grey remember we could be using Kislev flesh like we did on the skin and we're going to on the leather but I actually just wanted to distinguish the black this time I, don't, I didn't want it to be blending in too much I want the black to have a slight blue tint got to highlight the edges of the tears in his pants and we want to make these really sharp as sharp as you can I tend to get more precise with my painting as I go through the stages of highlights so when I when I put the base coat on I slap it on like I'm in kindergarten then when I do washes I'm in year one at that stage I'm still slapping it all over the place but I've got a little bit more coordination um, then we're adding the first stages of the highlights you know maybe we're in, in high school now we um, you know we just hidden adolescence we're getting a little bit straighter a little bit better at what we're doing but we're still distracted and we're still not quite perfect but by the time we're doing these final stages of highlights we're bloody professors we know exactly what we're doing we've got super clean super sharp super crisp highlights sorry about me big mop of hair getting in the way here I should probably shave my head or something I must have just woke up when I recorded this video don't worry about it though just pretend it's like the bushes like you know you're hiding behind the bushes and you're peeking through watching some dude paint everyone's wearing pants in this situation see how we're just adding very fine scratches this is what I call kissing the miniature like you know you you got to get it really fine so you kind of paint the air you sort of swipe nothing and then gradually lower the brush to the surface of the model until it just kisses it so you're painting nothing you paint the air and then you kiss it here we are oh yes now we've got to do the face mask same thing just highlight all the edges kiss it do, the, do what you got to do be a professor I thought about doing a bit of freehand on this face mask like maybe some checks or some triangles or maybe even like a 
a bit of a skull like you know how something like you know like bikies wear a skull face mask but then I was just like nah not doing it and that's the end of that story just gonna let the uh, the aviators the chrome aviators be the hero of this head today they're gonna draw a bit of attention don't really need to just go all fancy on the face mask that's good enough for now let's mix up a bit of ceramite white on the wet palette and enhance the shines on these black pipes just a little bit of white to make them look a little bit more shiny just on the very peaks of the highlights the apex of the turns don't want to go overboard with this it's just it's just brightening it up making it look a little bit more shiny a bit glossy show a bit of attention to it fire dragon bright let's get it get rid of that bottle don't need that anymore loads of water like heaps of water way too much water way too much water is what we want in this case because we're going to add a little bit of rust and usually when you add this much water to paint it goes all crazy and ugly but it works perfectly for rust because we want that kind of pooled effect like we want that because that's kind of how rust behaves pools of water gather in the metal and then it rusts so it's okay for this this really runny paint to pull and kind of get tide marks and all that just we can double it up we can do a few layers see how we're just kind of poking it stippling it making it kind of random and you can see how that first layer has dried and we've got like little tide marks like little pools of it add a little bit to some metal here and there like on his head his mohawk we can add a little bit to the metal on his arm and all the bionics as well whatever just a little bit here and there not too much let's use a bit of draken off nightshade we were thinking way back when we were talking about color that we were going to use druchy violet or some kind of purple for this bruising around around here where his bionics are popping out but bugger that let's do blue instead let's use some of this Vallejo color aluminium it's called we're going to start highlighting the metal just edge highlighting that's all there is to it going to edge highlight a little bit of the copper as well why not you can even use a bit of copper to highlight some parts some of the copper parts here where here what I'm doing is highlighting some of the the claws I'm, I'm i'm just fiddling around i'm like maybe i want it a bit sharper but i'm going to undo that in a minute don't do that remember we want it dull you twit because it hurts more a little bit of stippling a little bit of scratching poking just fiddle with it just get some um, some of this aluminium on the brush and fiddle with the edges just fiddle around with it sometimes i don't just do a line when i'm edge highlighting here with metal I, i'll kind of just like dot 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 like poke 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 scratch 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 dry 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 brush you know it's not just like oh here's an edge i'm going to make a perfect line to hit to highlight that edge no give it character give it character give it texture give it life highlighting the edges of his sunnies here but remember don't touch the chrome no paint goes on the chrome fix up that bloody silver that we put there on the blades typhus corrosion we're just dry brushing a little bit here and there let some of the typhus corrosion pick out some of the edges reintroduce some more scratches and some darkness on the edges edges don't always have to be light you can get a really cool effect by dry brushing a darker color onto the edges of the elements you get a really worn look Kislev flesh 
Let's use a bit of that now. I'm going to highlight the boots and all the leather stuff. Back at the start when we were talking colour theory, I thought we might use a bit of Xandry dust. But no, no, let's not, let's not even worry about it. Let's just skip that and just go straight to the Kislev flesh and get like a really old, worn look. Like, you know, that really old leather look. Oh, get rid of that brush. How annoying is that brush? Switch to a better brush. That brush is all right. Sometimes it behaves. Sometimes it's a good boy, but other times it's like just a cheeky little brat and you've got to send it to its room to just think about its behavior and get a better brush out and have a go of that. But yeah, we're, we're going for that kind of really old, worn brown leather look. So when we when we want to go for that kind of look, we want to skip some of those mid-tones and we want to go kind of, we want to jump the cue a little bit, go from dark to light all of a sudden, because the light indicates the, the scratched off leather, you know, like the layers underneath the top layer of that leather. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, Go get some brown leather, okay? Go get some brown leather and scratch it. Scratch off some of those layers and see what it looks like underneath. It's really light. Now we're just getting some, some scratches, edge highlighting. We're doing a bit of glazing, a little bit of stippling. We're just doing whatever we've got to do to get a little bit of life into this leather. And, you know, it's had a hard life. It's walked a lot of places. It's, it's ridden his bike. He's ridden his bike a lot of places wearing these boots. They're his favourite boots. Imagine how many gits he's stomped with these boots. How much power armour is kicked in. Just gradually go around refining it. Add a, add a scratch here, add a highlight there. Always highlight the tops of your boots here like this. Glaze a little bit towards the highlights. Don't forget his belt. We're just doing his belt in exactly the same way, as well as that armband on his right arm. Just switching back to some aluminium real quick to clean up these rings here on the boots. We want those to look silver. The rider's pretty much finished now. The leather's done, the pants are done, the skin's done, the tats are done, the metal's done, the claw's done, his head's done. Let's take his head off. Make sure there's no glue hanging out on the back of his head. If there are, if there is any, scrape it off so that when we glue it to his neck like this, it fits perfectly. Fabulous. Look at that. I'm happy about that. Part 10, finish off the bike. Back to some aluminium. We're going to go and paint the Reaper logo on the side of his fuel tank here and this is the second version of the logo this is the sideways version of the logo we start by just painting the scythe and just like we did on his arm tattoo we're just going to have a go we're just going to wing it we're just going to lay out the basic shapes with this silver and then once we've got a basic idea we can go back to some black and cut in and fix it and clean it up make it really sharp so you do a scythe then you do a sideways skull and then we do some teeth here for a bottom jaw it's just a line 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 and then another line and this Vallejo aluminium goes really smooth as well. It's quite easy to paint with, especially for a metallic. Making his eye and his nasal cavity look nice and sharp. Sharpen up his teeth down here, the bottom of his skull. Make it nice and angular. Orcs love their angular logos. There's no curves. Now we can switch to some Abaddon Black and cut in and clean it up, make it look really good. Now we're gonna highlight the black areas on the bike using Dark Reaper. 
this is we're going to do this in exactly the same way as we did the pants just sort of rough out some of the landmark edges and areas that we want to highlight the ammo belt here now these are just cylinders so all we want to do is just paint a dark reaper bar running parallel on each cylinder super easy now before remember we picked out some of the random spots on the guns and the the bike and we made them black we're just highlighting those up that's the dark reaper done now let's get some Fenrisian grey onto it get some Fenrisian grey onto the job sharpen up those highlights and remember when you want to get a really clean edge highlight try to use the edge of the brush as much as possible and just rub the edge of that brush along the edge of the part just rub it sometimes you can't do that though like right here we've got to use the tip of the brush and we've got to get a bit of finesse on tiny little black pipe under here also want to make sure we do lots of little scratches on the black I guess these parts are kind of like plastic like some kind of black plastic maybe and if they're not black plastic they're just metal that's painted black so whatever the case they're going to get scratched so we want to scratch them up nicely highlight any little rivet as well as the top edge of any little panel here we've just got a little bit of thin down Fenrisian grey like a little bit of a glaze just livening up the top of this curved surface more little black pipes here that we can highlight you get the idea we've done this before we did this on the rider see what i mean about the scratches there on the fuel tank it just really brings that brings it to life and it makes it very angular like i said before orcs love their angles they're never going to do anything that's nice and smooth check out the black area on the front of that boom gun there where the hole is where the breech is where the where the bullet shells come out see how we've got all those scratches there remember we painted those earlier with dark reaper and now we've highlighted them with Fenrisian grey so that's what we do when we're painting the the first stages of highlights of the dark reaper we paint little scratches everywhere and then we just refine it we refine those scratches as we move up the highlights let's look out some Kislev flesh and start highlighting the little ropey bits the little bits of twine or whatever you want to call it these, these are super easy all we've done is we've base coated them with steel legion drab and then they've just had a an agrax earthshade wash over the top now all we do is just paint the upper areas that you know like the top sides of them with kislev flesh it's pretty much just solid kislev flesh and then as the paint sort of starts to run out on the brush you just sort of blend it out a little bit almost dry brush it towards the middle areas of this rope and that's it it's so easy just going to stipple a little bit on the seat here this is just getting painted exactly the same as how we did the leather on the boots and his belt and all that but we're not going to put too much effort into this because there's a big fat orc sitting on top of it so you're not really even going to see any of it metal color copper we've got some little little switches here that I forgot to paint earlier well I didn't really forget I just decided now that I want them to be copper so I'm painting them copper sometimes you're just not sure what color something should be right at the start when you're base coating all the elements so you just leave it blank or you paint it neutral and come back to it later well we've got the copper out we're just going to go and highlight all of the copper areas so these have been base coated copper then they've had an agrax earthshade wash and the odd scratch of typhus corrosion smashed all over it so they need a little bit of sprucing up just on the edges and the prominent areas 
just the odd edge highlight here and there the odd bit of stipple just waking up this copper a little bit back to some aluminium thin it with a bit of water now we're edge highlighting all of the silver parts and this is the same as how we did the silver parts on the body we want a little bit of irregularity like what we're doing here we're not just painting a, a, a line along the edge we're kind of stippling it and poking it like dot 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 scratch 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 dot 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 scratch 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 that's how we do it sometimes you can do a line the point is irregularity and character a bit of randomness you want some edges to look a little bit sharper than others. You want some to look kind of banged up. If you find a little a little dent or a little scratch here and there, make sure you highlight underneath it. We're going to get a lot of character in this metal. As you can see, just by starting to highlight the edges, even dry brush the edges here and there. Look at the character that we've got in that gun. Back to the chassis, highlighting some of these dents here, highlighting the underside of some of these dents. Anywhere where there's a weld line like this, we want that welding to be really bright. So just whack some aluminium straight over the top of that weld. Here we're just stippling, shining it up a bit nothing to it it's so easy one thing i like to do when highlighting this metal is sort of paint these thin lines along the surfaces and create like almost like my own simplified geometry so like this is basically just a cylinder this this part of the handlebars here but i don't want it to look like a smooth cylinder i want it to look like it's bent here and it's flattened like some parts of it have just got smashed in and they've flattened out um, and you know like in the sculpt I've done that kind of thing but I've got so much texture here and so many different um, scratches and bits of battle damage and washes and stuff that I've put all over it that I can no longer see where those lines are anymore so I'm just making them up just like you know look, let's just put a line right here why not it just gives this smooth cylinder this once upon a time smooth cylinder a lot more character Yeah, so always remember when you're painting something with a lot of metal, you want to pay attention to the metal. All the different parts of the metal, the copper, the silver, the, 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 the gold, and you want to make them all look different. So this is just a big mechanical monster. It's, it's, all, it's, very, it's very metallic, but everything's all distinguished and different and interesting. Happy with that. What well, did you see that? I'm basically a ninja. We're going to use this polished gold now to highlight the, the bullet casings. This is, this is called polished gold and it's well, you know what it's good for? It's good for polishing gold. So I approve the name of it. And all the gold areas have been base coated with blighted gold, had an Agrax Earthshade wash, and now we're just sprucing them up with this polished gold. Don't forget his little golden tooth here. Unless you paint a tooth colour, which I just remember I really didn't want to paint a tooth colour. I just wanted to paint it gold. Bit of super glue now in these parts here. One, two, three, four. And the other pin. So that makes five. There's five five little bits of glue that we need to pop on and quickly get these quickly get this part on, squeeze it together before the glue dries. Come on, mate, squeeze it. Get it together. There we go. We got there in the end off camera, but don't worry, it still counts. Right. Look at that. Now we're going to use a bit of plastic putty to fill some gaps. Just get rid of the bottle. Just chuck it. We're going to fill some of these little gaps here. It's never going to be perfect when you're gluing something like this together. You know, we got five points that we had to glue, didn't we? We counted them. It was five. Some of them are going to have a little bit of a gap, so we're going to just fix it up with a bit of plastic putty. Fill this plastic putty into the holes, get a little bit of water, and feather it out a bit. 
We're obviously going to have to repair this paint job, but that's okay. Probably just going to add a little bit more character to the metal, isn't it? Hey, watch this. Let's make this one look like a weld. Dot, dot, dot. We're not even blending these ones out. We're making them look like welds. Let's go again. Look at this. Weld, dot, 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 dot. Let's not even blend them. Leave it right there. Kiss left flesh. Oh, we're going back to the rider again. Just real quick. We gotta we gotta use a bit of kiss left flesh to to spruce him up a bit. Pop some of the highlights on the skin. We're just making sure that this kiss left flesh is quite thin and we're just finding some of the prominent areas of the skin. They're just it's just a little bit dark, so we want to pop them out again. I thought we were finished before, but just goes to show you never know. You can always improve it a little bit more. That's what we're doing here, I guess. Sure. Mostly just glazing this, aren't we? We're going to get some into the crease here between the deltoid and the trap. And that is a crease. And often a crease is highlighted as opposed to shaded with a wash. Not always, but sometimes. Just keep working it, smoothing it out. We can do a little bit of stippling to blend it into the muscle. Doing his elbow here. These kinds of touch-ups really, really do bring the model to life. You know, they, they might seem like they're fiddly, and they are fiddly, but it's the kind of attention that the model really benefits from, you know. Highlighting the tip of his fingernails. You know, I always say when, you, when you're highlighting someone's fingernails, you're, you're showing respect to the viewer. You know, like we respect you, so we're going to highlight these fingernails for you. So brighten up the knuckles and the tendons and the top of the hand, the edges of the fingers, find those sharp edges. And back to the fingernails again and make sure we highlight the skin around the fingernails as well, like this part here. Just makes the nails stand out a bit more. What we're doing now is going back to some of our our skin greens like our wire flesh mixed with Zandri dust just to knock back some of these highlights if we went a little bit too far just glaze over it a little bit stipple over it a little bit because you know I tend to go a little bit too far with the highlight sometimes which is okay it's all part of the plan and then you just knock it back you just go back down the chain grab some of the the mid tones and blend it out a bit more with some stippling or some glazing or whatever It's just tweaking and working it. You can add a few scratches or a few freckles, whatever you want. Back to some kiss left flesh now, and we're gonna highlight the claw, all of the little scratches on the claw. This is very thin, thin down with water, but look how sharp that brush is. We twisted it, we're controlling that brush, and now we're gonna just really lightly pick out some of the the, the the major chips in the paint here and just highlight highlight them and make them look 3d it doesn't take much just poke around a little bit um, you just got to make sure you're highlighting the right edge of each scratch to make it look 3d so like the light is catching that paint because that paint is is slightly 3d it's very thin but believe you me it's casting shadow and it's collecting light let's find the light let's Let's shine it. Highlighting scratches and paint chips and stuff like this, it's one of my favorite things to highlight. It just really brings the part to life. And it's really easy. You don't have to pick every tiny little scratch either. You just pick some of them. Some of them you can ignore, but as long as you, as long as you get most of them or the prominent ones, you'll be right. Just make sure your brush is nice and sharp and the paint is nice and thin. Just build it up if you have to. Got to just repair these bits here now that the 
plastic putty has dried. So just smash some Abaddon Black over the black parts and some Lead Belcher over those silver parts here. And when that's dry, we're just going to use some Agrax Earthshade to blend it back into the surroundings. And while we've got that Agrax Earthshade out, let's, let's darken up his fingernails a little bit. Make them look a little bit dirtier as well. Darker and dirtier. Two of my favourite things. How good is it? Don't forget his thumbnail hiding under that boom switch. Get some Abaddon Black, thin it down with some water into a glaze. And we're going to glaze this around all of the welding marks. If you have a look at some welding, it kind of scorches around the weld. So we're kind of emulating that, darkening it right up around each of the welds. Don't worry about peeking through the through the bushes of my hair. Just, just hide behind your bushes and have a peek. This is worth seeing. This is the little fake weld that we did earlier. We're just going to, you know, paint that darkness around the outside and uh, makes it look even more 3D. And if we do a couple of layers of that black, watch how it comes to life. You can also hit these welds with a bit of a blue glaze or a purple glaze if you want. Go for it. Part 11, let's do the base. We're going to rip the model off the wire and just dry fit him for a moment. We're going to sit him on the base because we've got to, we've got to locate those holes underneath the tires and where they sit on the base. Once we know roughly where they are, let's drill a hole through the base poke some wire through and that's going to go up into the back tire right now we know exactly where to put the second hole let's drill it into the base and again we're going to put more wire through that hole and glue that wire to the base we're not going to glue the bike to the base just yet just making sure it fits and now we know exactly where he's going to sit on the base and his foot is going to fit snugly on the road. Let's get some of this cling wrap, sandwich wrap, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Let's get some, rip it off, put it there. We're going to use that in a minute. Let's paint some of this Martian Iron Earth. You can use any kind of texture paint. I'm just using this because it was the closest thing to me. And to reach for a different one, I would have had to go a little bit further. And I don't actually want this to be crackle paint, right? Like I don't want this to have a crackle effect. I just want it to have a kind of lumpy effect. So I'm smashing a whole bunch of it onto the base, really thick like this. Just smooth it out or we'll push it around the base. Get it sort of like this. And again, remember, we don't want this to be crackled. But what we're going to do now is just we're just going to put this cling wrap over it because we don't want any of that wet paint to get on the bike. We're going to place the bike onto that wet paint because we're going to press it slightly into that texture paint and it's going to create a nice kind of fit, but it's not going to get paint all over the model. We're going to leave that now. We're going to let that dry overnight. Fast forward to the very next morning, take him off and then we can carefully peel off the cling wrap. It's not quite dry because it's really cold here at the moment. Plus it's covered in cling wrap, but just be very careful with it. Just gently pull it off. And once you've got that off, we can put that outside so, so it can finish drying. But it's gonna keep its little indent where the tire goes. While it's wet, we'll just cut this off. It's a lot easier to cut this off when it's not quite dry. And once it does dry, we're going to hit it with a little bit of PVA glue. You can see I've painted this painted over it with a bit of PVA glue because if you don't, it just flakes off. It doesn't, it doesn't stick to the base very well. So just thin down some PVA glue and just run it over it and then put it out again for another hour or so to dry. Lightly sand the rim to make it nice and smooth. Sand it, file it, do whatever you got to do to make it nice and smooth. And 
next we're going to get some PVA glue thinned with water and we're going to paint this all over that texture because remember we don't want it to be crackled not in this case crackle paint works fine when you when you want crackle paint but I, I really just wanted this to be like a thick texture paint some PVA glue over it and sprinkle some dirt on it dirt from the garden there we go let's put that outside to dry again have a go at this this dude thinks he's the road boss I picked it up from drying outside this little green dude, he's the wrong size. He's green, but he's the wrong size. I reckon he thinks he's going to lead the greatest war on wheels there ever was. Not today, though, mate. Off you go. Typhus corrosion. We're going to create a little bit of texture because this is going to be a road base. This is going to be like asphalt. So we're just going to smash this all over the road part of the base just to create that asphalt texture. And we want to use typhus corrosion, not something like sand, because typhus corrosion has a really fine grit in it. So you can see here, we're going to have a nice asphalt texture when that dries. Let's get some dark rebar and smash it on the wet palette. Get some water with it. We're going to use a, a big basing brush to just paint the asphalt parts, the road parts of this base which is basically everything except for the skulls, all the metal, all the bullet casings. Steel Legion Drab is next. We're going to base coat the skull. We're going to make this skull look like it's kind of been burnt or scorched or something. Been blown up in some kind of vehicle accident blighted gold next we're base coating all the colors here all the elements we're base coating the bullet casings here lead belcher for the the rio sticking out of the road lead belcher for this little spanner here this is a bit of an easter egg this is the same spanner that can be found on the top of mez gob's armor What's it doing here? How'd it get here? Did did a road boss kill Mezgob? Or did did the runt gunner up atop Mezgob's suit just chuck it at the road boss? We'll never know. We're gonna use a second coat of Dark Reaper on this road. Usually don't mind a little bit of base colour shining through, but a little bit too much here, so just hitting it with a second coat. Null oil now. We are going to just dunk this in known oil. Using this straight out of the pot, just smash it all over the base, all over the skull, all over the bullets, all over the metal, just everything. Once that's very dry, we're going to start dry brushing with Fenrisian Grey. Just start off light, just kind of testing, testing how the color is looking, making sure we don't have too much, and then just bloody send it. Just go, just go ape shit all over it. Look at this, dry brush over the skull. Once we know that there's the right amount of paint on that brush, we can dry brush over the skull. That's all we're gonna do with this skull, you know? Once we've dry brushed it, it's done. And look how good it looks like. I mean, it's it's pretty simple, it's pretty basic, but when you've got a good dry brush and you've got just the right amount of paint on it, you can get an amazing effect by dry brushing. Back to the road, keep going, keep building it up to look sort of like that. We're gonna mask off using some tape. And we're going to get some Avalanche Sunset, continue our dry brushing mission. Just gonna dry brush some road lines on this road. Get a bit of stipple action, a bit of dry brush action, a bit of everything. This is satisfying when you pull this off. 
It's like a it's like a dream. Here's one line. Let's mask it off again. Just use the same bits of tape. You're good enough. And go again. Peel them off for a second time and reveal the second line. I reckon I did these lines a little bit too far apart. Just a pinch, but whatever. Good enough. Typhus corrosion again. We've just got to grunge up all of the metal, just like how we've done for the whole miniature. You could probably go a little bit heavier on the base because this stuff's just sitting there. Get some around this skull, right? And even even stipple a tiny little bit on the skull to create a little bit of scratch and a little bit of damage on the skull. Just like this. Make sure the brush is just kind of fluffed up. Get a little bit of randomness happening. Darken around it. Fire Dragon Bright. Thin it right down with water again to create a little bit of rust on this Rio that's sticking out of the road. Not too much, just a little bit here and there. Remember it's very watery as well and you can double up if you need to. I'm going to thin down some Abaddon Black and just enhance some of the cracks in the road. I'm getting it kind of a little bit everywhere here, but don't worry, we're going to come back and highlight these scratches. Using Fenrisian grey, like so. This is thinned down to almost like a glaze, just glazing it towards the cracks and edge highlighting them, fixing them up a little bit. But we don't need to spend too much time on this road because, you know, there's a big bike that's going to sit on top of it and we're not going to see much of it. But if you, know, if you had like a just a single miniature sitting on this and you were going to see it, I'd probably spend a little bit more time. Smashing a little bit here on this part where the road is smashed in half or fallen away because we're going to see that bit. We're going to see that bit clearly. precision work here. It's time to add some pigments. This is burnt sienna and this is a very red pigment. You could use any pigment really. Like any kind of color. You could use like a light sandy color. I wanted this to be kind of like an Australian Outback type look. Like a bit of a Mad Max vibe. So I went with the red dirt. And I just use it dry. You just stick it on and just start like poking it around fiddling it around and you just get you just get a mad effect with it you can't beat it this is carbon black pigment we're going to use this around the skull remember we wanted this skull to look like it's been burnt, maybe a bit scorched or blown up in some kind of vehicle explosion or vehicle accident, vehicle crash, a bit of story because you know this guy is some kind of speed freak, he's hanging around a speed freak desert with his other speed freaks and this one's sort of crashed, it's a bit of story. So by using this black pigment we can get that kind of charred look. Even the road around it has been charred. Now it's time to add dirt and dust to the bike. This is not so much rust as it is dust. You just get it on there and blow it off. Get it on there, poke it around, sort of press it into where you want it to be and then just blow on it. Blow the excess away. You can't just have a pile of dry pigment sitting on there, it won't work. So you've got to get it where you need it to be and it sort of sticks to it to some degree but then you just blow off the excess, blow off the little pile of it. We want some of the black pigment around the exhaust, darken the exhaust right up, get that kind of charred look around the exhaust pipes 
the exhaust manifold. Using the red pigment on the tires, just get it on there, move it around and then blow it away. And you can just build it up slowly, build up the layers. You can see here on this tire, we just smashed it all over it. And then you just move it around, blend it out, blow it away. There we go, we've got red dirt, red dust. We'll add a little bit on the claw and the bionics as well. Remember, this is not so much rust as it is dirt. Remember, he's a speed freak who's been speeding through the deserts and he's gonna be covered in dust. So yeah, get it on there, get it on his boots even. Go, gonna go back to the road and add a little bit more to the road. I was being a little bit careful the first time and this is just a second pass. So now we've got our road in the red desert and our bike covered in red dust. Now we're gonna use some Steel Legion Trab to paint the rim. I always want my rim nice and smooth. I'm talking about my miniature base rims here, you bloody sickos. So what we do is we, we make sure it's very thin and we just do two or three coats. We're not in a hurry. Once everything's done, we're going to varnish it with matte varnish. Before we do though, we need some high tech masking material, or in this case, blue tack, because I can't find anything on my desk right now, to cover the lenses because you don't want to varnish the chrome, you'll lose the shine. Then we're going to glue him to the base, and mate, guess what? It's all done. The road boss is ready to lead the boys to some kind of speedy victory, or maybe a hilarious death. <laughs>